to the safety bars. We're going to take you faster. Welcome to the traditional world of showmen, the travelling communities that appear as if by magic on Britain's doorsteps every summer. Roll up as we join them on the season's highs. Oh, i just got a feeling it's going to be the best day of my life. And loves. Oh, that is disgusting. Get out of my face. Behind the curtain of bright lights and candy floss, we reveal a way of life that's struggling for survival. Should have tried harder at school. We've got a central job. <laughs> Come with us and join all the fun of the fair. Coming up, the showmen gather at the Great Dorset Steam Fair. Hello. Five freaks for the price of one show. Joby Carter unveils his new money-making venture. It's extreme bad taste. Avi Danta puts his staff through their paces. And you've got a f move. A f machine will not pull itself down. Baron Coopland comes up against an old rival. He told me once he said he'd burn me down if I came here with a dodge. And we meet the latest heavyweight contenders. Dorset Steam Fair. Since 1969, it's been famous as one of the largest gatherings of steam engines and fairground rides in the world. It's a unique blend of nostalgia and entertainment, and for the showmen, it's the highlight of their calendar. All our history is shown there. Our traction engines, our scammers, our old equipment. The shows that we used to have, the boxing shows, the parading shows, the freak shows. Jack up, take a look out. Today, Baron Coopland is setting up his mum's traditional fish and chip van, which has been at Dorset since the 1970s. With um, levelling the, the trailer, uh, but because this is very old, the, the land legs don't work anymore players. as always baron has enlisted the help of his ever reliable sidekick mario okay take bottom one then and then leave top one on this way mario jack up leave it don't let down i would do it no leave the other one on because the other one's harder oh slowly mario slowly why did you put jack right out now you've done it too fast you always have a problem, Mario. Always pull, Mario. Oh, Mario? Yeah? That'd be OK. We're all set up now. We've uh, we've uh, arrived. We've done the hard bit. There's no better life to, than being a showman, to uh, be on sites, beautiful sites, green grass, sunshine, and everything seems worth doing what you're doing, all the effort that you're putting. For A.B. Danta and son A.B. Jr., the road to Dorset starts the night before in Southport right, with a ride known as the Wild Mouse. The son's 12 and uh, he'll know how to, put this ride, how to put this ride together. Within 12 months, being me, he'll know how to put this ride together. Kane! He just wants to come and do this. I mean, I let him take these rides down with me sometimes but not all the time because it's the hours you know you the hours to take him down ab is one of the danta dynasty and owner of some of the biggest rides in europe the young we the big ears when we lay this on the floor he's about 45 foot long there's 44 tons set on the back four pilots it's nearly midnight but it's going to take another eight hours to tame the mouse Abe's developed his own unique management style to get the best from his staff. You've got to move. The machine will not pull its shaft down. Right, and in the middle of this, right. All the shouting has taken its toll on Abe's voice. Get off this living. Yeah. Get it choked on the front of this truck here. 
but nothing's going to stop him from calling the shots. Hey, boys! Hey, push down, hey, that's it. Show me in, boys. I lift him on the back corner, lads. Get this base in, come on. <coughs> With the ride packed up, it's time to hit the road to Dorset. Unlike more traditional roller coasters, this ride can be transported from place to place. It just takes three customised articulated lorries and two cranes to do it. The technology's changed now. Well, I bought the mouse. That's all cranes. Right, that's fantastic. Every every four, you'll you know, what are you doing with this? This shouldn't be on a fairground. So like, I'm like, but I've I've been and seen it. I looked at it. I mean, it, it's can be done. We can do this. Go for a turn around and come back. Aby's arrived, and his voice is on the men. Come here. Give me that stuff. Give me that slip. Huh? Give me that blue thing. But it's been a long night. The team have travelled through the night, covering over 250 miles to get to Dorset on time. Go with them. That's good, that's good. Go across. For AB Junior, it's all in a day's work. His dad's rides are just like a giant Meccano set. Well, put the base down and level it all up, so it's not all over the place. Keep going. And again. Come on. Boys, the breakfast. The job's far from over, but in order to keep up staff morale, AB decides it's time to give them all a treat. Treat being the operative word. Now, only once a week, though. Don't want to spoil them. Don't want breakfast all the time. On the other side of the fairground, there's not a bacon butty in sight, but the Couplands are also hard at work. Small blocky. Blocky, blocky. Blocky, blocky, blocky. There you go. We've got to keep them working. We mustn't let them eat. Keep drinking, just keep them happy. Because if they eat, they won't want to carry the dodging plates because there's 92 of them and they're quite heavy. So we just have to keep them going, push, push, push. As well as his fish and chip van, Baron Coupland has plenty of other attractions on site. Now it's the dodgems that require his attention. It's all hands on deck to get the ride ready in time. And that includes Baron's son, Perrin. Very small uh, for here, here. Very small, very thin, very small, and I'll lift... Lift up. We need to make it run tonight, but very likely that won't happen, but we'll do our best. What's this coffin? Go put it, put it straight in. On the dodgems, it's the steel base that needs to be laid down first. It's 2,400 square feet of metal and it's back-breaking work. But at least Baron can pass on some words of wisdom. That's why good, do good dodger, man, carry plate, good, easy, yeah? People who know understand, very hard work for them and for you. For this sort of work, you're talking about probably 25 to 30 ton, four men carrying a day, and they've already done it last night or early hours this morning, so they've done it twice. So you could say between 50 and 80 tons just four people, and that's a lot, that's a lot of work. Ain't done bad, are we? Half 12. In a minute, we'll just go nice, steady, upright, and then let them have a break. Let them have a coffee break, is it? Like Baron, his dodgems are getting on in years, which makes them particularly challenging. These are uprights we're putting in now. They're, they're solid wood. Uh, the modern technology now is aluminium, which has been out probably 50 years. These are probably 150 year old. Uh, this is the original part of the dodger. They're heavy, but you get used to them. Come on, up. He may be 61 and semi retired, but Baron is still prepared to lend a hand. This is for baby. Come on, up. <laughs> Down you get. Coming up. The competition heats up for Baron. He told me once he said he'd burn me down if I came here to dodge him.
Joby Carter unveils his latest brainwave. I pushed John Hatpins through the neck, through the face. And Henry Danter gets all emotional. I seen it, I was in tears. I tried to escape. For the Carter family, the Dorset Steam Fair is an event where they can feel at home. The Carters have cornered the market in fairground nostalgia, and their trademark is lovingly restored Victorian rides. I love these rides. They're living, they're breathing, they, they kind of, they make a funny noise, and I've heard it before, and uh, they talk to you, and oh, this modern technology is no, 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 not for me. Joby Carter helps run the fair alongside mum, Anna and brother Seth. But for entrepreneur Joby, the rides and sideshows are not enough. He's keen to revive another Victorian tradition, the freak show. <laughs> Leaving the rest of the Carter rides behind in Western Supermare, Joby's hoping his collection of the weird and wonderful will be just the thing to bring in the crowds. I knew the performers from the Circuit of Horrors and I just thought Freak Show. The shock factor is going to give it legs. This could work at Dorset. There's that many people there and they're just the kind of people that are not PC and would, would buy into it. Masterminding the Freak Show is Circus of Horrors empresario Dr Hayes. Well, I was born in a circus. Yeah, my dad got us a, a, a gig as um, fire eaters and fakirs, which is just different tricks. Uh, mine was like, because I was only little, really walking on broken glass, but I also used to have a, a rope tied around my neck and four people would try and strangle me. Imagine doing that now to an 11-year-old kid. So we, we did all that sort of stuff, and then I had, had to learn fiery, but my dad sold us as this great act, and we didn't, I'd never done it in my life. My mum wouldn't even let me light a match. The Circus of Horrors boasts some of the more bizarre and skillful acts in the country. From accomplished sword swallowers to more novelty attractions. The difficulty with the freak show is keeping it, keeping it fresh and, and, and you, have to, you have to weigh up giving people their favourites and giving them new acts. Um, we brought Mr Methane in this year, which just most childish thing I've ever seen. I loved it. Can <laughs> <laughs> only turn the piece there? Oh, thank you. Putting the art into fart. Mr. Methane, you can imagine what would happen. The old sight could go up. Yeah. Do you have a special diet? Or Neil's here, is it? Uh, generally, it's cabbage. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He did a gig with um, uh, Bad Manners once, so he was in their dressing room, and they said to him, um, does it smell? And he said, no, it never smells. And they said, can you do one for us now? And he said, uh, do you want me to? And they said, yeah. So then he let off this great big fart, really. <laughs> and it stunk to high heaven. They had to evacuate. Even Buster Blood Vessel had to run out of the dressing room. It was so bad. Joby's freak show was born in his head quite a few years ago. You do have to keep reinventing yourself. Although we've got all the traditional rides, you, you do... You do have to come up with new attractions, because if you just stayed absolutely static, people would stop coming. We're going to give you a little free show on the front here, so let's start bringing the freaks out. Fire-eating aside, Dr Hayes's other job is to persuade the punters to come and see the show. To achieve this, he opts for a bit of traditional Victorian crowd calling, or barking. Please, come a little closer. You need to see this really close. I don't know what you're so scared of today. Come a bit closer. The freak show's a version of how they were. The way it operates in terms of barking on the front, calling people on, and then letting the crowd in and taking their money as quickly as possible and then giving them a performance inside, giving them value for money and sending them out again shocked and intrigued 
So they tell their friends. That's showmanship, and it works. You won't see a show like this anywhere else in the world because we are the world's only touring freak show. Freak shows date back to the 1600s and were particularly popular with the Victorians. OK, let's get these last group of people in. These days, the performers come from a variety of backgrounds and occupations, including some you might not expect. I used to be a tax inspector in Germany years back. Then I started a tattoo and piercing business and, um, yeah, then became a performer. So... I tried different things in my life, but I love what I'm doing now, and that's what I want to keep doing. Here she comes, Anastasia LaPorte, ladies and gentlemen, the blade of walking beauty. She will walk barefooted up a ladder of swords. When we first met, Asha has never performed in her life. No, I was studying um, sciences, um, uh, you know, biology, chemistry, and sort of um, met Hannibal and sort of got intrigued by it, but I never thought this is going to be something that I'm going to do in life, you know, it was just kind of a hobby. And then uh, eventually we went to see the Circus of Horrors and uh, got offered a job, and a few months later we were on the road. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? You're not allowed to smoke in a public place anymore. You can walk a lot of swords, but you can't smoke a cigarette. Have you ever thought of that one? I don't know. The Circus of Horrors features other acts with even more unusual talents. I open bottles of beer with me eye, eat light bulbs. I'm a human pincushion, I uh, push giant hat pins through the neck, through the face. I got stuck in my head, I pulled it, my left eye just popped on its own, and I was like, wow. Stable my body, but when we do a bizarre show, Hello. I stayed with all the parts of my body, you see. I swallow a yard of red ribbon, make an incision in the stomach, and pull it out. It's extreme bad taste. Would you, would you say it's fed taste? Absolutely. Yeah. We do our best to make an extreme bad taste. I mean, we do normally get at least one person leave the show, don't we? On, on average. Yeah, but it's normally you, <laughs> Dorset's 600-acre site plays host to one of the largest gatherings of showmen in the world, and pitch space for rides and kiosks is at a premium. As well as the Dodgems, Baron Coupland and his family have six other pitches to look after. We've got the fish and chip bar, Popcorn kiosk, the Miami, Dodgems as you can see, the pony ride, a couple of uh, small kiddies rides. Um, so we've still got quite a bit to do. A good pitch can be a license to print money, and every inch of space is jealously guarded. What it is, uh, the guys left me the wrong uh, size ground. The pitch is not quite as big as it should be. It's about a metre too small. How they set another stall down there on this pitch, which is bigger again. So that means I've lost three foot. I've now lost another three foot. So I've lost, in fact, around about two metres, which is it's not fair because I've been there 50 years, or my mother has. Baron isn't going to take any threat to his pitch lying down. When I've got here, I said, you took a bit of ground off me. He said, no, I ain't. He said, I'll give you a cut of foot extra. I said, no, you ain't. You've got 50 foot there. He said, I don't think you have. I said, yeah, I have. He said, all right. He said, I'll sort it out next year. You know, I don't mean to be nasty, and I don't want to deprive me of getting a living, but I'm losing ground, and I'm losing money because I ain't got my kiosk up. When it comes to pitch space, it's every showman for himself. So people just move things about a little bit for themselves, but sometimes it affects somebody else. Some people don't care and they just do what they do and then it affects somebody else, but they don't care. If I was in charge, it wouldn't happen. But because somebody else is, um, they're, they're in charge, not me. So they could leave it there and tell me that that's where it's going to stay and there ain't much I can do. With so many showmen competing for customers' affections, rivalry is inevitable. 
and blood doesn't always run thicker than water. The dodging bit further down is my cousin's. He told me once he said he'd burn me down if I came here with a dodging. So we'll see, won't we? He won't do that. Um, but, you know, part and parcel of our business is that it, it can become a bit hard and uh, you have to do what you have to do. For Baron, business comes first. But for his son Perrin, who's in charge of the Dodgems, Dorset is also a place to just soak up the atmosphere. Dorset is a big deal for us and our family, as well as a lot of other families. It's, it's a part of a traditional fair, a modern fair. So to us, it's, um, it, it's something out of the ordinary, and, and we like coming, and we very much enjoy it. And Perrin wants his kids to share in the fun too. See, Daddy? The children, like, we've got our children with us, and they like coming, they look forward to it, you know? They count the weeks because they like coming here and having a look around. If it rains, we love it here. If it's sunshine, we love it here. If we make no money here, we still love it. Meanwhile, Baron's leading the push to get his dodgems up and running. A job that normally takes two days is well ahead of schedule. We've done more than what we expected today. We're very pleased how it's gone. The staff work really well. The cars will have to be cleaned tomorrow, but we just want to get it running now because then we've done something that's... We've achieved something that's very rarely done. Open the day before, full on build up open with a dodge of this size. Yeah, down. You know, this is our business, and it's, it's great. And when the weather's good, there's no better business. And when you're taking money, there's no better both. Come and join us for all the fun of the fair. There's a whole load of fun in Treasure Island. Henry Danter is the proud owner of Treasure Island Amusement Park in the small market town of Stourport on Severn in Worcestershire. The best value in the country for fairgrounds you'll find here at Treasure Island. But once a year, even Henry up sticks, takes to the road and heads south. The Great Dorset Steam Fair is magnificent because it's just something unique. The money is important, but for a lot of showmen, the gathering, the atmosphere, is worth as much as the money. And to me, it's worth more. Henry has been coming here for over 25 years. As well as catching up with other showmen, he sees Dorset as an opportunity to look for new money-making rides. When our visitors come back next season, they've got to see something new. They're going to think, wow, it was good last year, but it's better this year. That's what you've got to build on. And who better to advise on new attractions than the owner of some of the biggest rides in Europe, his nephew, A.B. But the only place this could go is where the roller coaster is at the moment. Yeah, but what if we, what if we had St. May and dropped over the water? Well, that's even better. Even hundreds of miles from home, Henry can't avoid bumping into old friends. Oh, you're doing all right? OK. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, but you also... Yeah, it's over. Come oh, I'm going to come down and have a look at it. Yes, that's ever right. That's what you want. Oh, I had one the other day in Starboard, didn't I? Henry is also keen to discuss Joby Carter's latest attraction. Though Joby seems more interested in the Danta who hasn't made it on site. Hey, it's good to bring his lovely daughter along and he brings his nephew. That's yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Dorsey's Steam Fair is exceptional in that it's just one of those events on the calendar where you get older people in preservation, so many showmen go, and, um, you know, different walks of life, various people, members of the public, and you, uh, you kind of all get together and you just end up bumping into so many different people. It's, uh, it's very sociable. First of all, we have to talk about the freak show. 
Yes. Now, I've sort of given a bit of a ro lowdown on this freak show, good night, till I've seen nothing like it. Not for a very, you very long there? time. Have you, have you, you came to see it last year, didn't you? I seen it, I was in tears. I tried to escape, <laughs> and the man had a knife in my throat. He said, were no, you, we Were you offended? No, I never paid. <laughs> <laughs> But Joby is a man who doesn't bear grudges. I do get along with a number of uh, showmen. The dancers, I've never met an unfriendly dancer. They're all they're a very civil family. Um, and they'll come and say hello and see us on the fair and stuff. Avi's new ride is one of the flashiest, newest rides in the country. It's a serious, serious bit of kit. Um, yeah, awesome. Good luck to them. Coming up, Perrin reveals his own version of roadside assistance. Yeah, well, we've got two staff. One's the RAC and one's the AA. The Baron and Baroness go on a royal tour. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mark. How are you? Perrin and Star. And we meet the newest boxing hopefuls. You're our best in half. Go to town, <laughs> The Dorset Steam Fair is the largest show of its type in the world. For the 200,000 visitors and for the showmen themselves, it's a chance to catch up on a bit of history. Well, it's just the greatest show on earth, really, for steam engines. There is nothing else like it. King George, I love it. It's, it's oh, probably my favourite engine. It's just got so much character. It's a real used engine. It, there's a lot of engines here that are beautiful, but people don't actually want to get them too dirty. One of the five-day events highlights is the so-called showman's lineup of working traction engines. If you look closely, you can see that they're. Uh working that engine hard, the paint's beginning to uh, smoke a bit on the chimney. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. It's, you know, and it's showing them tank is now heritage and that what made Britain great. Track. You know, we were the world leaders in building this stuff, and luckily, so much of it has survived. I like seeing being used. Just, you know, yeah, fair enough with no trailer on the back, but this one here, look, that's actually pulling a big, heavy old trailer, and you can see she's chugging away and having to work. For Joby, it's a rare chance to share a bit of showman history with his son. To be honest, if I wasn't with John, I probably wouldn't stand and watch it, because I'm always doing something, and I've got more time here this year than normal. So, uh, you know, if John's interested, I'll just let him... I'm not trying to force it on him. If he's interested, he's interested. If he's not, he's not. Listen to him slow up when they're struggling, because they're going up the hill. So, they're, you know, that's got some real weight on it there. It's brilliant. Sometimes you see them and they're throwing sparks out the front as well. That's when you really know they're working. Big job to be all day. You must feel a little bit silly. A little bit. Just like his dad, John seems to have developed a soft spot for grease and coal dust. Come on in, John. Let's go. Come on. Come on, we'll come back later. This is what children do. Just one more. Take your mix, candy floss. Take your bag, serve yourself, candy floss. For many, Dorset represents one of the last links to showman family history. Baron Coupland's son-in-law, Elliot, complete with son and family sweet van, is no exception. The rest of the family's here, and it's just nice to come here, catch up. I've, I've been coming here all my life. I was actually christened here when I was a baby. My dad came to the very first steam fair, like, 43 years ago, something like that. And we've been coming ever since. Whatever their family history, 
showmen can't help but worry about the competition. You know, when the new rides come out and they're newer and they're bigger and they're better than yours, and it's making money because it's new, people haven't seen it before, yes, you get very envious. Even at my age, if something new comes out or a ride you haven't been on, you know, it's always nice to have a ride and try it, you know. I'll probably feel sick once I get off. I'm not as young as I used to be. But for Elliot, there is no other event like it. As soon as you arrive at Dorset, even prior to, to it opening to the public, you know, it's, it's got such a unique atmosphere. So it is brilliant, really. Get the water fares on, coconuts with airs on. I haven't got any coconuts. That's just a bit of a gimmick, what we say as a joke, you know? Baron's fish and chip van is now up and running. Originally owned by his mother, who's now retired, Baron is honouring her 50-year-old pitch. But it seems it's more of a problem than a pleasure. Well, me and my wife now are semi-retired and uh, it's very hard work to run it, keep it clean. It's old, so it takes a lot more care. And um, we just want to be here at the rally and, and walk around and do what the public's doing. Enjoy it, because now I've took it over, it's a problem that I didn't expect. So I'm going to get out the problem by getting rid of it, <laughs> or leaving it at home, leave it in the yard, and um, let it just stay there until it falls apart. And it appears wife Vicky is no fan of fried food either. I hate it. <laughs> I like the, the atmosphere of everything, and that's why one of the reasons, because we used to just come here to visit, we don't like it. I don't like all the grease. I don't like having the beer continuously. I like mine and kiddies' rides. Yeah. Not this. Taking a welcome break from the chip vac, Baron and his Baroness take a tour of the fair on the only non-steam powered transport available. Hello, Fran. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, that's family. That's we see showmen that we don't see all year, so it's a great feeling to go there and see how they've been doing over the year. They normally say they haven't been doing no good. That's famous for showmen. Um, but we're great survivors. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mark. How are you? Travelling in style. We're having a, having a ride out. Having a look around. That, uh, that's an old showman. They come from Dorking, Benson's family. Quite a big family, very close to us. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. That's, this Hello, is... Mrs. Graham. Hello. Mrs. Graham. Victoria. Friends reunited, Baron takes time to meet some other blasts from the past, this time on wheels, as he takes a tour of some traditional showman accommodation. These are some of our first caravans, uh, as you call them. We call them living wagons. My uh, grandfather used to own one, and um, we used to get a complete family in there, and it was, you know, it's quite amazing, really. For Baron, it's a nostalgic look back at his heritage. This would be the living room and the uh, kitchen. I don't, I, I don't know what's happened to the cooker, but a lot of our cooking got done on these stoves here because uh, the tops of them is where they kept the water hot for when they was uh, wanted to wash the children. They also cooked on them. That, they kept that going 24 hours. Um, because uh, that was the eating in here as well, because there was no central eating, and then in the, the, in the bedroom. But even in those days, there was a bit of caravan envy. The, actually, this is a lovely bedroom. This is, this would, we would have been proud to have a bedroom as luxurious as this, a window at the end of the bed so it's the air blows through. That would be a, another piece that pulled out would be another double bed or maybe even a single bed. But this would be quite luxurious, this one. Very nice. Yes, no, 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 no. Because that's not what we're like. 
And in the traditional showman caravan, there's a whole new meaning to the term box room. This here was uh, the belly box, what we call the belly box, and uh, it's in some of the wagons, the children used to sleep in that. Uh, that was a bit their bedroom, they'd crawl in and crawl out. Um, and they used to quite like it, it was quite fun, you know, they wasn't in the wagon with the mum and dad no more. They was grown up now and uh, they lived outside. Meanwhile, back at the freak show, Joby Carter's had a marketing brainwave. I want to organise um, a couple of the boys from the freak show. I have a fight tomorrow in here. He thinks it'll be the perfect publicity platform for tonight's show. It'll be different. One won't feel any pain because he's got no brain, and I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. Oh, I'm not joking. My money's on, the, on uh, Danny the Dwarf. Until the 1960s, boxing shows were a common feature at British fun fairs. But when the British Boxing Board of Control restricted appearances of their licensed boxers, they went into decline. These days, it's only members of the public who are allowed to actually fight. There's a good boy after all this time. There we are, we've got a show there, two plays for you. Boxing started on the fairgrounds, people don't realise that. Much the same as booths like this is where the cinema started. You know, the fairgrounds got a lot to, to, that is offered and given the world, but, but it kind of then goes into normality, if you like, and, and comes away from the fun fair, and people forget that, which is a great shame, because this, is, this really is a, a, a huge part of British history and our heritage. And we should celebrate it more than we do. I think so, anyway. That doesn't mean I'm going to get in there and have five, though. <laughs> in 1977, Muhammad Ali demonstrated his boxing skills for charity in this very booth. Today, the talent on display is a little less illustrious. You can bring your six mates along in Snow White. I'll still beat you. Oh, yeah. yeah. What about the charming prince, mate? <laughs> charming prince? Yeah. Short ass git. Eh? It better be in the back end of the cow. Yeah. Even the baby wants to beat you up. <laughs> that was all right. Yeah. yeah. You'd lose that one as well. So you're looking at the new champion of the feet show. Boxing champion. Right, come on in. Come on in. Let's go, let's go. Da, 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 da. This travelling boxing booth is the last of its kind in the UK and it's only taken out of cold storage once a year to make a single appearance here in Dorset. This is the man. This is the man to the show, Russian The what? Mongolian. Mongolian laughing boy. You got it. And why do they call you that, my friend? That boy's performing for you. Maybe sticking pins in himself for a living has taken its toll. Because today, Tony the Mongolian Laughing Boy is no match for Captain Dan the Demon Dwarf. Get up, that's it up! Throw the towel in! By the time this five-day event comes to a close, 200 tonnes of coal will have been consumed. 10 miles of electric cable would have been laid. And 550 barrels of beer would have been drunk. Most of that beer gets drunk after dark when the fair really comes to life. Tonight, Perrin Coopland is operating the family dodgems and has his own tricks of the trade to deal with inebriated customers. No way on bumping, please. One way round. No way on bumping. One way round. 
They've had a few drinks, they tend to do a lot of head on bumping intentionally, so yeah, they do get boisterous. We deal with that by telling them one way round only, and if they don't do it then, then we obviously slow the ride down and they soon get the, the picture that um, if they don't go one way round, they're going to get a slow ride, so then they, they sort of cooperate then. Yeah, so they do get boisterous. It's probably the only time you see they can drink and drive legally. <laughs> they love it. Dodgem drink driving is one thing, but there are plenty of other rules for parent to worry about. The Alpha and Slater have got involved now and they want them to be called Dodgem cars strictly for no bumping, um, which is absolutely ridiculous because they've been going for 50, 60 years and all of a sudden they want to change something that's been running for that amount of time. I mean, where do it stop when they start talking about things like no bumping on dodging cars, it's health and safety gone absolutely mad, bonkers. But health and safety means nothing if the dodgems don't actually work. Come on, Bob. On what, Matchett? On, on motor? Which number car is this? Magic. Take wiper blade off, yes. Okay, Magic, just take off wiper blade for tonight. Thankfully, help is at hand, as Perrin has his own version of roadside assistance. Yeah, well, we've got two staff, one's Magic and one's Suave. One's the RAC and one's the AA, so between the pair of them, they can quite often fix the problem. Coming up... Joby suffers from a sense of power failure. Joby bought a very cheap generator that doesn't work. And the publicity drive pays off as it's a tight squeeze at the freak show. Evening at the Great Dorset Steam Fair, and the crowds are gathering to watch Joby Carter's freak show. We've got Broadway, look at this, take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. It appears that his earlier publicity stunt at the boxing booth has paid off. Nine o'clock, Saturday night, this is it, this is when you just get the maximum people in. The bigger the crowd out front, the more people you can get in. But behind the scenes, there's a problem that could ruin all of Joby's hard work. Shall I just, Rog, shall I just start it again? Joby bought us a very cheap generator that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but it's rolled down three times today. That's not good. Joby's dodgy generator is in danger of bringing the show to a halt and disappointing the paying public. It's pitch black in there, that's a problem. But. Depends what show they're doing. If it's the, the electric chair show, it doesn't tend to go well when you lose your power. It's happened before, they're live performers, you improvise. Well, luckily, it went at the end during the fire finale. So I just sang a cappello, and then I, um, and the torches, the flames from our torches lit the stage up. If it had happened early, we'd have had to stop, because it would be pitch black in here, that's the problem. OK, so the potato sword, as I say, luckily the electricity inside the electric drill is working. OK, here we go. I should drink some more beer. Seems to be working now. With potential disaster averted, it's on with the show. Welcome to the freak show right here. people have seen anything like that before so you always get that element of surprise and people covering their eyes and then looking through their fingers
enjoyed the adrenaline and everything being on stage. You just turn into a different person. The appeal of the freak show is seeing something you shouldn't. You're not supposed to go to something called freak show and enjoy it. In today's society, we're supposed to frown upon such activities. Actually, no, I want to see it. I want to, I want to, you know, when, when a sign says wet paint, you want to touch it, don't you? He's now, believe it or not, 300,000 pounds running through his body. And we want to try and prove this to you. It's shocking, it's funny. No, I'd love it. It's one of the best shows we do, I think. Let's lose the lights, please. Look at that. Sure. You feel the electricity, you get a buzz out of it. You get electrocuted, literally. Okay, now what we want is a fire torch. An ordinary common to go up with fire torch. There we go. Okay, now this is what we use for fire meeting generally. We're going to see if we can light this off his head. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to give it a try. There it is, straight off his head. Look at that. I've heard that it makes you sterile. But... Hey, <laughs> that's show business. <laughs> With the show a shocking success, Joby's in the mood for diversification. The freak show was... We did well with it this year. Uh, you know, it's a good event, a busy event. Um, I do feel I will have to give it a break for a couple of years and put another show in because I think... We get too many people say, I saw it last year, I saw it last year. And um, you think, well, all right, let's give you something new. Um, or it needs to be tried somewhere else where people haven't seen it before. We've been there four years and I've endorsed it and maybe it's time for a change. So, you know, that's food for thought. Coming up next time, A.B. Jr. trades in his micro-scooter for a big truck. Right, you got it. Whoa. Joby's come up with another marketing innovation. We've had this made especially. It's going to be wonderful. GCSE results arrive at the fair. I got an A and B. <laughs> Drag racing dodgems hit the seafront. And there's an unwelcome new attraction at Treasure Island. Oh, that is disgusting. Get out of my face. <laughs> Later, Amy gets on a high horse about Harry's use of makeup. What a life she leads. It's all about Amy. Her new series continues tonight at 10 here on Channel 5. Or you can watch her an hour later on Channel 5 Plus 1. Next, the new season of The Mentalist continues.